good afternoon to all of you here. Uh, yes, my student Jervin is right at, uh, on stage, I'm downstage. He'll be coming up on stage to share with us uh, his project later on, uh, very shortly. But before he comes up on stage, uh, I thought maybe I can give us an overview of how this collaboration with SUTD actually came about. How do we come together to actually redesign our applied learning program? All right, so uh, just a bit of context setting. So the ALP focus at Peichai Secondary School uh, historically has been focusing on uh, health and food science. But over the last few years, uh, there, we, we noticed that there was actually a decrease in uh, student interest in this ALP focus and the ALP offerings that we are, off, we, are, we are giving to our students. And it's due to the changing student demographics that we are seeing uh, in, in our school. And, in addition to that, right, there's these multifaceted challenges that's uh, ongoing in the world, influencing our external environment, and also causing some of our um, educational pro uh, priorities to change. And at our school level itself, we are looking at trying to equip our students to be future ready, uh, be able to create and connect, contribute to the community. Which is why late last year, actually, we started to think about, hey, maybe we should redesign our applied learning program so as to stay relevant with the changing times. Um, and uh, in our Envision AALP, actually, we were thinking perhaps it could be something related uh, to social issues uh, that is being faced uh, by the community and also to get students to make use of technology to problem solve, come up with solutions uh, and to advocate uh, for the social causes that they are passionate about and eventually bring their solution and their advocacy to the community for positive impact. So all of these sounded really like very lofty and important possible goals, uh, in fact, admittedly, to most of my uh, teachers in the ARP team uh, because these goals are actually very dissimilar to the work that we have been doing for the many, many, many years. Okay, but uh, serendipitously, we actually came across this opportunity to collaborate with SUTD because they were actually looking out for a school to partner um, uh, the, the piloting of uh, design thinking in school. So we went to SUTD with this idea of redesigning our ALP uh, uh, curriculum uh, and uh, they were actually thrilled to partner, to partner us uh, and, and we thought, okay, hey, uh, let's come together and see how things uh, will work out. And that both um, designs a force for change uh, for Pei Chai. And uh, in this nine months of journey, um, uh, coming together to redesign the ALP program, they started off by really upskilling our ALP teachers uh, in design thinking mindsets and tools. Uh, they also guided us uh, to apply design thinking to redesign uh, our ALP curriculum uh, by in interviewing our students to really find out what are the interests of our students uh, so that we can create an ALP program that really meet their needs and interests. In other words, we are involving our students as co-creators of our redesign journey. Uh, and I, and must, I must admit that this was a very powerful um, process for us because through the journey itself, through this uh, interview session, we actually got to know that although we have some students who are very interested and uh, you know, eager to start their social cause uh, project, there are also a good number of students who want to care for the school environment. They want to care about their school community. So we decided that Perhaps we could um, you know, uh, change our gear, start off with something that is closer to our students' heart since we are also at, at the beginning trying to teach them what is design thinking. Okay, so that was what we did. Some changes along the way because in fact design thinking is all about iterative, right? Uh, so as most of our ALP teachers are actually not um, having prior, any prior understanding of ALP or have any prior experience in applying DT, uh, per se, so our SUTD folks uh, actually work with us to ease our teachers into innovation, okay, with a guided pilot. Um, so they came in to teach our two of our set one classes uh, on uh, the first sprint, the first design sprint, and then our ALP teacher actually sat in to observe how DT can be facilitated. And this was a, again a very useful session for us because. Uh, as an ARP teachers, we got to see how it can uh, actually take place and actually this boosts our confidence. We were able to you know, conduct uh, the rest of our design thinking uh, classes for the entire set one cohort without uh, actually, in fact, uh, any intervention or, or uh, much guidance from uh, SUTD thereafter. Okay, so these are just some photos to show you uh, some of our teachers and students uh, in action. 
All right. And uh, towards the end of the year, when right before we, we closed the year, uh, we actually held a, a mini showcase for our students uh, to, to, to share with us what are their proposed ideas to improve their school environment, such as the toilets uh, and the, uh, uh, the li library itself. Well, these two places are really like their top favorite trying to improve uh, at Pei Chai. Uh, and we hear lots of uh, good ideas. Um, and in fact, I, I must say that uh, initially, okay, not all of our students actually project are actually are at the same level of maturity. There are some that are more ready, you know, some others not so. But we decided to just go ahead with the uh, project showcase nonetheless because we want to prioritize this opportunity to allow our students to really share their ideas, get feedback from the audience and iterate on their uh, project. So, um, at this point in time, I'm going to invite my student, Jervin, to come out on stage to share with you uh, his project. Um, this is actually his first time coming on stage to share with such a big crowd. Uh, his slides he's sharing may not be the best, it may not be perfect, but uh, all the best. Thank you, Ms. Lee. Uh, hi, I'm Jervin. Today, I'm going to... Uh, be talking about my project. So our project genesis aims to improve the school environment so as to uh, so as to promote student and staff well-being, play our part as a global citizen, and educate our student body on using resources wisely. This is a map of the design thinking I was taught during the ALP lesson. During the discover phase, we did a site visit to the student and staff restroom, and we noticed that the student restroom had no toilet paper and was littered with uh, toilet, uh, toilet paper. The staff restroom had an emergency toilet roll that, could be, that was on the floor, which could be soiled. <laughs> uh, to better understand the student and staff needs, we made a survey. Uh, after the survey, we collected the results and noticed that the cleanliness uh, of the toilet was not very clean, with a score of 1.35 out of 10, with 1 being the dirtiest and 10 being the cleanest. We also found that the average square of toilet paper needed to, uh, when going to the toilet is 6. <laughs> the students uh, needed a hygienic restrooms equipped with toilet paper dispensers in all cubicles and consistent availability of toilet paper. The teachers needed a reliable toilet paper supply, which eliminates the need for backup rolls vulnerable to unintended soiling. <laughs> uh, after that, we made our how might we statement, which is how might we ensure a stress-free and hygienic restroom experience for students and staff by addressing the issues of toilet paper availability, overuse and misuse in a way that promotes sustainable living. This is the first version of our toilet paper dispenser. It has three buttons uh, with an antibacterial touchscreen user interface. The first button tracks users and their quantity use. The second, uh, second button logs in with students' ID number or fingerprint. And the last one allows them to report if the toilet is dirty or littered with toilet paper. Uh, we noticed that there are some problems with our first design which are navigating the dispenser with an ID or alternate methods can be cumbersome. Using punitive measures may seem more like penalization than encouragement for positive habits. Collection and potential storage of us usage data raises concerns about user privacy and data security. Uh, our value proposition is to minimize fuss in using the solution. For example, no privacy issues. Waste prevention by limiting the and reminding users of the toilet paper usage. Caters to individual preferences in amount of toilet paper required. Offers data and insights on toilet hygiene and toilet paper usage for timely follow-ups and preemptive measures. Uh, support cleaners in replenishing supplies foster and fosters eco-consciousness and data vandalism. This is uh, our second design. This is a storyboard showing how the dispenser can be used. Uh, if a student or staff needs toilet paper, they can press the dispense button, which will give out six squares of toilet paper. But if they want more, they can click more. 
However, there will be an eco-friendly message which will remind users to limit usage. There's also a feedback feature which allows students to report on toilet cleanliness. This shows the school attendance app which will tell them if there is misuse of toilet paper, the cleanliness level in, of the toilets, and if toilet paper needs to be, be replenished in certain toilets. Uh, this video shows how the uh, dispenser app works. Uh, this uh, video shows how the school attendant app works. Uh, here are some possible improvements for our dispenser. Allow auto detection and notification when toilet paper runs slow, and allow language translations as some school attendants may not know English. Allow, allow voice eco message for greater impact. This project can be extended to other maintenance supplies such as paper towels and soap. It can also be extended to other areas of school such as to monitor light and electricity usage in classrooms and ICT equipment. Uh, here are some key learnings I learned while doing this project. I learned to apply design thinking to problem solve, the technical skills to make an app, presentation skills to make a pitch, and create critical and creative thinking skills. I will now pass the time back over to Miss Lee. Thank you so much for showing him the, the grace and kindness. Okay, so right at this point, uh, our students, our SEC1 cohort, uh, which we call them JDI or Junior Design Innovators, as well as our ALP Teacher Council, actually are all equipped with DT and we are ready for our next mission, uh, which include actually culling through the insights and the project ideas that our students had came up with during the first two design sprints, and then help that, uh, use that to inform our library redesign that we are looking at next year. Uh, we are also going to get our uh, set one cohort, okay, now that they have learned DT, to actually work on the social cause project of their choice. So we actually allow them to choose what team they are interested in. So earlier on, I recall Laura was mentioning, uh, you know, getting your students, allowing your students uh, to choose what they like to learn, because that will actually give them the agency and want to, to put in the effort to learn. Right. Uh, we are also going to create opportunity for our students to uh, bring their ideas and their advocacy to the community for greater impact. And last but not least, uh, for our new JDIs, we are looking at uh, iterating user tests and refining uh, our ALT, ALP program so that it can continue to meet our students' uh, needs and interests. And with that, thank you so much for your attention. Thank you.